Good everyone. I hope you guys have an amazing day. So in the previous episode, I spoke about um, AI for business and I covered prediction workflow and recommendation system, right? Now, today I wanted to do a very tiny uh, episode on AI for call, <clears throat> excuse me, AI for call centers. So let me move to the new page. So how does AI uh, plays an important role when it comes to call centers, right, operation? Obviously, um, if you've ever done a job on a call center, uh, you know how stressful the job is, right? I have done um, three months uh, when I was in, uh, when I, after my high school, I'd done three months in call center just to get that customer service experience. That was back in the days. Um, so I do understand the challenges that might cause, uh, you know, the problems a, a sales rep or, or call center agents face, right? So yeah, for call centers. Now, I spoke about, you know, a few of the AI technologies. Now, I'm pretty sure if you've been following along, you would by now know what machine learning is, what neural network is. Uh, some kind of, I briefly touched about the natural language processing. Like, for instance, it's pretty much used when, you know, when you wanted to make the conversation with a computer or with a machine, then the natural language processing comes into picture because it's kind of understands what you're trying to say and the machine or the model will break down into smaller segments and based on that it forms a response and and um, you know let you know uh, and and gives you a response back right in a very simple way um, that's a very simple simplified version of what I've explained uh, then I talked about the deep learning where the neural network forms a big part of it right now similar way right AI plays a very important role when it comes to call center like from a Salesforce perspective you often talk about service cloud right now in the service cloud is right when a customer say for instance uh, you have um, just a very simple example um, you are a company uh, sells say for instance uh, beer right so you're a brewing company right you make stouts you make porter you make uh, uh, ale, you make pilsners, you make lagers, and, and Pacifica ale, and wh whatnot. And the customers, you know, often, um, you know, rings you or emails you for an order, and the opportunity get created, and and you know, um, all the stuff get done behind the scene. Now, that being said, right, you might also experience a scenario where customers have queries. Sometimes the batch you send is not really great. You, you know, some of the batch contains the broken bottles. So they have a query to lodge and, or sometimes they have a question around, uh, for instance, uh, ingredients, say for instance, some, um, you know, say for instance, uh, let's say, you know, you're, you're a brewing company where uh, you mentioned that you put secret ingredients, let's say in a stout. And that is, and some customer might be curious and they wanted to send a message or they wanted to call to ask what are the secret ingredients does it contain sugar does it contain any uh, substance which can uh, affect with my medication that kind of stuff right so just as uh, just to set the context right just to set the narrative now imagine if you're getting similar calls you know a day and out then you know it's it's can wear out the, the calls and the agents right now imagine you have a middle uh, layer in between or or a kind of AI system in between, which can answer most of the calls, and and you know, and route uh, the case which really need human interaction to the to the case agent. Uh, I I do think that brewery may not be the right example. Let's say you know you are responsible for installing solar panels. Yeah. Now, um, solar panels is a great example, right? You send your service rep. Uh, or uh, the technician home to install the uh, solar panel and sometimes a customer calls for different queries Oh, this is not working that's not working what if I turn on this option what if I turn on that option what about the battery stuff you know uh, from an overview perspective let's say you know you're getting lots and lots of lots of simple queries even though you have a knowledge base uh, exposed to the user still users uh, are pretty much confused they still calls you for basic query right and so that's putting a lot of stress in uh, you know, as a part of your call center, uh, uh, so they're putting a lot of stress in your call center agents, and agents are getting pretty much overwhelmed, and they 
constantly telling uh, to the boss, hey, I'm constantly getting this um, call about the solar panel installation, about this battery issue or the battery qu uh, query. And even though we uh, kind of suggested to the customers, hey, we got a knowledge article published, can you please look at it, right? Now, in spite of that, customers still calls. Now, how do you solve it? Now, we have something called Einstein Bot, which is a part of a, you know, Einstein Bot we can use for Service Cloud. Now, Einstein, uh, or I'll say eBots. Sounds nice, sounds cool. eBots, I like to call eBots, Einstein Bots, uh, simple acronym. Um, so, Einstein Bots, right? Um, because I uh, believe that Einstein Bot is a pretty amazing uh, piece of a tech <clears throat> that Salesforce introduced, which helps the sales rep or sales agent uh, focus on the main task rather than worrying about the nitty gritty aspect, which overwhelms them. So what Einstein Bot does, right? So this is, let me picture a scenario. Yeah, so this is the rep uh, agent, or you can say agent. Yep, yeah. and this is an agent, and this is a customer, right? Oh, come on. Okay, it's an agent, this is a customer. Let me change the color, let's say the blue, yeah? Okay, now customer being constant and calling, you know, agents for every simple task, you know, constantly calling, constantly calling, for basic tasks and agents are here getting overwhelmed, right? And it's affecting the productivity and they can't really focus on, you know, the bigger picture to help the customer, right? Because sometimes customer will have very super, you know, complex problem. And and if, if they're constantly getting, you know, calls around simple, simple stuff and the customers are not really going to the knowledge article. So first it's a training problem you, or maybe communication gap that let's say even after you address it, it's still not getting resolved, then you can broad something called, you can bring in something called, oh, come on. Uh, uh, this is, no. Which one is it? You can bring something called Einstein board to equation. So what that will do is, right, Einstein boards can handle all the, you know, most commonly asked questions and can direct the customer to the right resource so that this way the agents get shielded from a lot of nitty gritty, you know, repetitive kind of questions. And only when eBots thinks, Einstein bots thinks, okay, I think when I say thinks, it means AI behind the scene, realize that uh, this is beyond a bot level query, it needs the human assistance so they can route that a customer query to agent. So what this will do, um, agent can focus on the query, which is really important. This will ensure the customer request being taken care of in an efficient way. So you can see what I'm trying to say here, right? AI plays a very important role. It's not like uh, you know fancy sci-fi stuff which you've been, you know, which you might have seen in Terminator or or in other you know, or Marvel's movie, right, where Iron Man has a fancy AI tech called Jarvis. It, we don't have such kind of stuff, right? We don't have that kind of technology at this stage. Or, or even if you do, it might be limited to military stuff. I don't know. I'm just speculating, but I'm just saying. I mean, that kind of tech is not often available to an average user, right? So what we're talking about here is a business problem and how artificial intelligence can solve things behind the scene. Now, AI is not about writing every simple, single business rule uh, using your computer language. It's not the case. You build the model, and then you feed the training data to the model, uh, and your model will train and learn from it. And then when you when the model gets exposed to, say, a new set of data, the model will try to figure out what's the right pattern and come up, come out, uh, so I come up with that. A desired output, probabilistic output. But one thing people always misunderstand, misunderstood, always. Ah, uh, so I can't speak because I, I got, <clears throat> again I got sore throat. I am just. Uh, so what people uh, fails to understand, right, um, is that 
when you talk about training data, right, the data which you are going to use as a training set, it needs to be brought into a form or shape which is useful for the AI model. You can't really take the data and dump it to the AI model, right? It needs data cleaning plays a very important role. That's why, you know, when people come to me and say, hey, I wanted to do machine learning, right? So first thing I often ask, how comfortable are you with data cleaning? And they were like, what do you mean by data cleaning? Well, obviously you won't get clear or clean data every single time. You may or you may not, right? When you don't, you need to clean the data and, and bring the data into in such a form so that your AI model can understand, right? And it can give a desired output. Otherwise, what will happen? You feed the training data to AI model, it will not function very well. And that's pointless, right? And it will predict something which is incorrect or highly undesirable. So it's not going to really solve anything for the business user. So that's the reason why data cleaning is very important, right? So if you're not, if you wanted to be a machine learning engineer or an AI engineer, you need to understand the importance of data cleaning. It's very, or data optimization. It's very important, right? Yes, you can use Python, you can use SQL, you can use, you know, other tech, you can, you know, to, you can use um, even um, uh, Swift, uh, to do machine learning, even you can use Java. It's 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 not about the language you want to use. Obviously, you need to know uh, you know SQL query very well, and you can use any other you know high level language. Because people often get tied to the oh which language can I use? Can I learn this language? Can I learn that language? All you need to know you need to learn just one language and try to understand what you're really trying to solve. Right, that's the most important thing. What exactly you try to get out of it? That's the question you should be asking rather than, you know, being a master of different tools. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but you should not be giving 100% attention to just to learn tools. The, your main attention should be the business problem you're trying to solve. Because if you are good at solving business problem, you, you will um, be rewarded based on that, right? Because we all don't need merely t uh, tool users. We got a lot of them. And that's the crux of the whole problem. People are focusing on the wrong things. So yeah, um, that's um, pretty much I wanted to cover today. And and yeah, so I think I will plan to finish this entire course in maybe in 20 to 25 episode. That's the whole plan. I will see how it goes, right? Because obviously I don't, I don't want it to drag till Hanukkah. Uh, I wanted to finish before Hanukkah. That's the main plan. Uh, but we'll see. I'll try my best, right? Uh, so that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. Adios.